Hi, it's Michael here from digitalhomebrew.com and I just wanted to introduce you to our newest digital stir plates. We've just conducted a second production run and we've managed to squeeze in a few extra features so I'd like to detail them throughout this video. Uh, for those that don't know, the digital stir plate is a magnetic stirrer uh, designed for brewers when they're making starters to stir their starter wort. And um, that differs from a standard uh, you run of the mill analog stir plates in that an analog stir plate will usually have a, um, a dial to set the speed um, a, to a rough amount, uh, whereas the digital stir plate uses up and down buttons to set the speed uh, in increments of 100 RPM. And that's controlled with a microcontroller inside, sort of like the cruise control on your car, so it'll do all the work to maintain a set speed. The benefit of this is going to be consistency uh, when you're making yeast starters uh, that it's easy for you to uh, choose a speed and next time repeat that speed and the stir plate's going to do everything it can to lock onto that speed and maintain it um, consistently. So uh, you'd have a similar amount of uh, uh, aeration going on um, or, uh, or gaseous exchanges. Uh, also maybe cell destruction or something was a, a factor when your stir plate is spinning around. Maybe that could be a factor. But the bottom line is that uh, it's going to give you similar cell counts, hopefully, similar conditions for the yeast to grow uh, between your starters, and that's hopefully going to give you a more consistent pitching rate in your beer. So for those who are already familiar with our digital stir plates, uh, the first thing you'll have noticed is we've changed our front panel design a little bit. Uh, most of it's superficial, but we have actually put metal uh, domes behind the up and down button. So as you click them, you get more of a tactile feel. So um, if you're in a loud environment where you can't hear the beeps, um, you'll still be able to feel a lot better this time. Uh, how many times you've effectively pressed the button, you know, you won't get as much of that, oh, did that click register or not sort of feeling uh, with the new metal domes. Another thing we changed was our, um, our mounting screws in the top of the enclosure. Um, the previous screws, and I think I have some here, the previous screws have a, a bit of a rounded head. You see that top one there? Um, those were the ones that came with the cases originally. And the trouble is, uh, we have a lot of brewers who are brewing 5 litre starters for double batches. And if you have a large 5 litre flask, it can sit so wide on the base that it was sitting on the heads of the screws just a little bit. And um, you know, it's not the end of the world, but it just wasn't perfect either. So this time we've gone and sourced some better screws that now we're putting into all of these new stir plates. Just so that it, you've got a completely flush surface there. Another thing that we've changed in this batch is the stir bar. Now there was a lot of um, talk on the on the forums about which stir bars we'd end up going with. Uh, we've trialled out some of the 40mm oval bars and they were pretty good, but in this batch we actually ended up going with a 30 by 7 millimeter, which is one millimeter thicker than our original 30 by 6 millimeter bars that we were using in the last batch. And the reason we're going with them and not the 40s is because we've actually tested We've tested all of these stir bars here uh, quite extensively and um, it turns out that these 30 by 7s were the best ones out of the whole batch so we're pretty happy with them. We'll make some videos later on uh, with our new stir plates to show you how all the other stir bars fared and you know show off the stir plate a little bit but um, yeah we're pretty happy with how these perform so that's what they're what are being shipped this time. Another thing we changed uh, for this release of the digital stir plates is the magnets that are used inside um, and this time we've gone with slightly larger magnets. We did a lot of testing with uh, this whole brick of useless neodymium, um, all different shapes and sizes and uh, in the end we, we chose this one here, this round uh, one is slightly larger and uh, it turns out size wasn't everything though, we've tried some really big ones that didn't work very well uh, but this one has given us a bit more reliability so uh, uh, it holds the stir bar a bit better and uh, it allows you to ramp up a lot faster without having to worry about, you know, is it going to throw off the stir bar or anything like that. So we hope that helps a few people as well. And another feature that we've added uh, is an auto restart. So like an analog stir plate, if you ever had a blackout, let's set the camera here, um, with the digital stir plates, uh, it forgot where it was running at and when the power came back on, it was turned off. But now as you can see, it's just started up again. Um, it now memorizes the speed that it's running at and you know in the event of a power failure or something like that it'll come back to where it was running at before. So I'll just give you some demonstrations now uh, with a 2 litre flask, 3 litre flask and 5 litre flask. This is the 2 litre here. Uh, first thing you'll note is we can ramp that up straight away to full power and we haven't thrown the bar or anything we don't have to worry about that anymore. 
Um, we'll get a good vortex going here and it'll just start sucking in air. So um, I'll do the 3 litre flask next. Here's the 3 litre. Same bar again, this is still the 30 by 7 millimetre um, stir bar that we'll be shipping with all of these stir plates. These are all shot Jira and glassware. And this will take a bit longer because it's a larger body of water. It'll take a bit longer to get the, the stirring going, but there you go again, it's reaching the bottom and sucking in some air. And finally we'll test ah, the 5 litre flask, here we go. So now you can see here the 5 litre flask absolutely dwarfs our stir plate, but thankfully the yeast won't know what size stir plate you're using and so long as they're being you know, moved around and kept in motion, it probably won't matter. So uh, I should have turned that on because it takes a while for the 5 litre to spin up. It's going to take a while to get a vortex going. Um, but what you're seeing here is still, uh, there's no troubles with the stir bar coming off. Uh, we're running at full speed and um, again this is shot during glassware so your mileage may vary depending on, you know, the quality of your glassware and how thick it is and, and whatnot. But uh, here we go, we're getting a small vortex coming down and that'll eventually reach its tip down to the bottom and start sucking in air here and there. So I just wanted to show that off to show that the digital stir plate, you know, it's 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 a lot it's pretty small for the five litre flask, but uh, it's still punching above its weight. Okay. And of course we still have all of our old features. We have the mounting flanges on the side so you can mount it to your brewing bench and um, you know the splash proof front panel, digital controls, tachometer LED um, it's designed and assembled in Australia and um, of course it comes with our no BS warranty same as the old ones where if anything goes wrong just let us know um, we're more than happy to help you out you know if if we can't help you out you know we'll replace it or repair it or you know if worse comes to worse um, you know we'll give you your money back or something but let us know if you're having troubles with it because that helps us to improve our product and we want you to be happy as well so um, yeah, if you're interested, if you can think of a, a use for a, a digital stir plate in your brew shed, uh, head on over to www.digitalhomebrew.com and yeah, check them out before they go out of stock again.